Just in, in blockchain, I've seen some marvellous charity uh, projects that involve blockchain, but again, we're just scratching the surface. Um, but in, in your words, how can blockchain transform the charity industry? Well, I, I think charity is the best use case for blockchain because of its humanitarian impact, right? So you've got an industry which to me, and if you think about it, and everyone in this room thinks about it, it's pretty much the most abused industry in the world because it's a license to print money for the founders of charities. 90% plus does not get to the beneficiary it was lost in the organization. Uh, recent scandals with Oxfam, I'm sure people have, some people in this room have heard of, they used the uh, donations for prostitution. Um, the CEO of UNICEF used to be the CEO of Save the Children, was sexually abusing the staff and children, which is, you know, not good. Um, so you've got blockchain for people working in charity, but most importantly you've got blockchain for the transparency level where you can actually see the people you're actually helping directly. You can talk to them. They are audited on that blockchain. And one of the most important things with any blockchain or technology is actually ID. People that need an ID. And there are three billion socially excluded people in the world. Three billion people, that's nearly half the world. They don't have an ID, they don't have a home, they don't have access to clean water, they don't have access to food, or very, you know, not regularly, and 10 million children starve to death every single year. Now right now, charity is big because you get say, people say, it's my birthday, I'm gonna give something to charity. There's the donate button. But you know, the question to everyone in this room is, do you know where that money's going? Do you know where it's really going? I think there's also a bigger question though, because it's not just where the money's going, but it's also, does that money that then gets spent actually do, is there a net positive? Effect? Yeah, exactly. Well, how do you record that? How do you um, KPI that? How do you know? You know? So, you know, I set up Freedom X because of that. I used to be homeless. So I'm, I've been there in the worst places. I was homeless for eight years. And the people on the street that you see with the cardboard sign, they're not most of the homeless that are actually around. Most of the homeless are actually hiding off the grid. You know, I, I used to hide in people's gardens and stuff. Right? So, because of the, they don't want to be seen because of the shame issue, you know. So, you've got way more than a million people homeless in the UK. Um, so, you've got a disconnected society right now. You've got someone standing outside a coffee shop, sitting outside a coffee shop, sorry, with a cardboard sign saying, I'm homeless, please help me. And people walk past, a few people put coins in, and the coffee shop ignores them and sends them off. In fact, in fact McDonald's uh, was on record, it was one of his articles where someone actually went in to buy McDonald's for a homeless person outside and they wouldn't serve them. You know, that's the disconnect in society that we are facing right now. And your next door neighbor, you don't meet them, you go on Facebook to find them. So that's the disconnect. So what I wanted to do was completely disrupt that with blockchain, but not just blockchain, it's also the model of charity. Because the model of charity is not efficient, is not effective, it doesn't work as the way it should work. So I thought, why not change it around? And why not, um, why don't we make it uh, all profit instead of non-profit? So have a think about it. Sounds almost perverse, doesn't it? So. Yeah, because you feel good when you give to charity because you're getting rid of some guilt and you think, oh, I've done, I've given you to charity this year. But what if you could actually have someone that was being held, a vulnerable person, you could train them to run a coffee shop on a bicycle that only costs five hundred dollars to actually buy that, and someone could microfinance that and share the profit in it. But you made it conditional, so you said to the, to people who were involved in your charity, "I will help you if you help somebody else." You took the profit and you put it to the next person to help them. And I've tested this, and it's very, very, very effective. So essentially, you've got you've got a charity project that is also making money for investors. Yes, but they give. They have to give the profit back to the next recipient. Okay. So it is. A, it's, it's an all profit in terms of. We are human beings, guys. We're in a technology conference, and people kind of look around and go, "Oh my God, this is very technical," and no one's really being human, right? But at the end of the day, you've got to have a meaningful transaction in life to have a meaningful life. So if you can have a transaction that actually helps a human, you can see and witness their progression as a person, and you're actually the cause of that, that's the most incredible feeling you will ever have in your life. Now I know this because I made a TV show called Get a House for Free on Channel 4, 
and I was the first person in the world to give houses away to homeless families, pay the mortgage off, get them off the street. There are people living under the bridge and God knows what, you know? And that feeling for me was amazing because I gave something I didn't have as a, as a kid. And I remember the last day filming that, I know what I'm, I'm rambling on, but it's important to say this. The last day filming, when I was giving the last house away, there was this uh, woman in the garden walking around, and I asked the production crew, I've not seen it before, who's that? And they said, well, that's the psychologist. I said, what, what are they doing here? Well, you know, she's there because she's going to counsel the person that you're going to give the house to, because they're not going to, you can't believe it. So I said, no way. I said, yes way. And that way I flew, I was crying, I was the moment my nose was running, I couldn't speak, and I, couldn't, I said to the production crew, you're going to have to cancel the shooting because there was so much flu, and this, and this psychologist walked up to me and said, Marco, you don't have flu, you're having uh, an emotional reaction to an unresolved childhood issue. And I said, no shit. She said, yes shit. <laughs> right? So I went in the house and gave the house away, and I cried non-stop for three days. Because I hadn't cried for 40 years. Marco, do you know what? I, I know you said you're rambling on, but I'm sure... A lot of people out there would have been upset with me if I had interrupted. I, and I, I wanted to hear that because I think, yeah, quite right. Quite right. So I think it's a remarkable story. And if, if you haven't seen that on Channel Four, you can you can still catch it on, on the uh, on the More Four. It's, yes, it's a remarkable piece of work. Um, rushed. Let, let's bring you in here um, and, and reset the emotional tones. I think I can I can sense that you know myself and a lot of people here are probably. Really feeling your issue there. It's, it's, it's a well, yeah, because if you could actually give to the people that really need the help, I mean, this, I'm sorry to steal the You'll have loads of time, don't worry. There was this Syrian family that, that paid human traffickers £20,000 to leave Syria 13 years ago. The dad was a P had four PhDs. The sons had two accountants' degrees. And when they, in the daytime, they used to take nine bags and go to the library and study, study for the master's degrees in accountancy. And they had the cleanest clothes. And they were homeless, and they were living under a bridge, right? Right. So this is going to lead me on to a question later, almost about that very subject. And I, they got their asylum two weeks ago, after because I got involved and did it for them. I helped them, and it, they got it two weeks ago. And they called me up and said, "Oh my God, we're so emotional, it's amazing," and that's completely changed someone's life. And that can impact someone else's life like you wouldn't believe. We're going to hear more about that, yeah, because I've got a question later that will sort of reflect that a little bit. But Rush, let's let's hear from you. What what are you seeing in this space where?